Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio program. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and today I have a special treat for you. I will be interviewing my longtime friend, Brother Stephen Milhorn of ExpounderMinistries.com. His program is called Walking in Simplicity. I have known Brother Stephen Milhorn and his wife, Joanne, for many years. She is one of my very closest friends. They are both very dedicated to holiness to preaching against sin, and to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. May the Lord our God continue to bless their ministries. Welcome to Just Praise Him Radio, Brother Stephen. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. Thank you, Glenda. It's a pleasure to be here, and I want to say hello to all your listeners and to let them know that we have a uh, a powerful interview, and we're just going to talk about the things of God and ministry work, and um, we'll exchange ideas, and hopefully you'll be able to um, profit and learn from what we have to say. Indeed. Amen. To start out, would you, because my listeners are unfamiliar with you, would you share a little of your testimony with the listeners and tell us how you were called into the ministry? Well, in brief, I was raised Roman Catholic, and in high school I fell away and was a um, kind of a deep center for the next 10 years. And at the age of 26, God sovereignly called me by His Spirit into back to His Son, back to faith in Him and to Christianity. From that point on, I was brought into a solid church, Church on the Rock in Rockwall, Texas. And um, He also in high school, uh, got me to typing and into Spanish and other things that I would need later on in life that I did not know about at the time, but it was very profitable in that. And also, I was a dispatcher in my secular job, which also helped me with management of time and typing and this and that. And then in the 80s, I was studying uh, the Bible because I had a burning call in my heart to teach, but I felt like I was called to teach, but I really couldn't afford seminary. I couldn't afford to do it the the normal way. And so I just kept on with studies and all that. And all of a sudden, a friend of mine introduced me to uh, prison ministry. And then I went into prison ministry for a while, jail and prison ministry. And then I started Expounder Ministries in December of 1993 and have been doing it off and on ever since then, really about 25 years of solid radio preaching. But all of the foundational work that God had done in me prior to starting Expounder Ministries, I had no idea that it was going to be in preparation for that because, I, like I said, I didn't go through the proper channels of seminary. I went through the prison ministry system and was ordained to preach in that system. So I started that radio ministry in 93 and have been doing it ever since. And so that's my basic testimony. And I will say that um, it's been a very long journey and there's many facets and there are many things to talk about within that. But that's just one form of ministry. There's there's the evangelism, there's street preaching, there's pastorate, there's writings, there's books. There's all forms of ministry that one can do. And God calls each person individually for the task that he's prepared them for and that they're talented to do. And it's very wise of Anyone who's listening who is called into the ministry or or if you feel like you have a call of God on your life, not to forsake it. Uh, like Paul admonished one of his you know, followers not to forsake the ministry that God has given you. And so uh, it's, it's wise to, to continue to nurture and to keep preparing yourself until the door fully opens for you. Amen. Very well said. So I've not been in ministry as long as you have. I didn't start until I think late in 2009. What is it like to be in ministry for 25 plus years? What has that been like? It is challenging. Um, I will say that in radio in particular, because of the abuses of TV and radio about asking for money and, and the abuses of the uh, charismatic movement somewhat of, you know, using the prosperity gospel and stuff like that and people not wanting to be on a mailing list and stuff like that. And people that, quite frankly, cannot afford to to give, they're hesitant to respond. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you know, just a hello and just an email saying, hey, we're listening, I like your program, that's, that's worth any $50 or $100 
dollar offering that I could ever receive. And I really don't really receive very many offerings at all. And and I'm not asking for any, but my point is, is that one of the difficulties in my particular field of radio is the response. People listen to programs, they chew them up like a nice marshmallow and said that was nice and they move on with their life. They don't really consider the time and effort that it takes to produce the contracts you have to buy and the, the faith walk and the, the, what we have to pay the radio bills. We have to do all the work and then we, we sow our seed of the word out there to the people and they enjoy it. They listen to it. It's a blessing to them and then they just move on with their lives. And so we, we rarely hear feedback. And to a certain extent, that's okay because we're here to sow. We're here to sow the word and the, and to advance the kingdom of God. So as far as that goes, um, that's okay. But that's one of the lonelier parts of ministering on the radio. Uh, TV, I don't have much experience on. I've been on one time. Uh, now I did do some evangelical travels in India for three, three different trips. And uh, I've done, like I said, the prison ministry, which is also uh, kind of a separate beast all in itself because you have to go inside and minister to them face to face in their own cells and in their own pods. That takes training and requirements and all that kind of stuff. I would like to say this before you move out into anything that God may call you to do, it's very wise to be prepared and to know what you're talking about for sure before you start putting yourself out there because you're going to be challenged. You're going to be naysayed. You're going to be criticized. Now, there will be some listening ears, too, that will also receive what you're saying. But for the most part, the challenges besides travel, preparation, expense, and the wear and tear on you and your uh, studies and the physical work that you have to do to minister in whatever form that God calls you, that is just to be prepared uh, in the Word and in prayer and to make sure that you have this calling from God and that you're communing with Him and His Word by the Holy Spirit, then go ahead and move out. And he will He will guide you on that path. Whatever it is, uh, He will guide you. But like I said, there's many forms of it. This is just my form. But I know that I was called to this form because in every other way, um, going into the seminary or going into the pastorate, which I kind of wanted to do initially because I had a burning desire to teach. But this ended up being the perfect avenue for me because, and I quite frankly, Glenda will say that there's no um, deacon board or any supervisor thing, holding a money cloud over me, saying you can't say this and you can't say that. I can basically minister as God requires me or wants me to minister, and I, I'm free to do that, and it's a very liberating thing. And so in the future, if you are putting yourself out there in ministry, uh, you may have restraints by others, but you have to also obey what God has said. And so, you know, like at the Gate Beautiful, you know, at the Gate Beautiful, when he healed the man, we, we cannot help but to do and say what God has told us to do. You can threaten us all you want. But we have to say what God has said, and that's that's a that's a beautiful thing, and that would be my philosophy. That is actually the message for the end times Christians right there. No matter what anybody threatens you with, whatever God tells you to do, do it. Whatever he says to say, say it. And we do that, you know, and at some point, will the people left here, all of us or part of us or however many, are going to be, you know, faced with life and death choices where are you going to speak his name because he's telling you to, or are you going to shut up and live a little longer in the midst of, you know, what will literally be hell on earth, I'm sure. What is the focus of Expounder Ministries? Well, initially, my heart's desire was to to do and say the things that I wanted to hear when I was first starting out, which is to have the basics of Christianity explained to me, have the full message and the understanding and the knowledge of God all just laid out in simple terms. And then from that point, once you have that foundation and you're solid in the beginning parts of your walk, then as you grow, then you can move into other areas and it's really good. So my whole focus initially on the radio was to break down in the simplest form possible the, the basic message, the things of the Apostles' Creed, very good foundational teaching in that, uh, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, it's all good. And then just to explain the basic doctrines of the faith properly, scripturally, and not with the man-made skew that's on some of them. Then after the years of, of doing this, you know, because my program is entitled Walking in Simplicity, and I, I try to keep
keep things simple as possible, but I end up sometimes talking in a very intellectual way, and I don't mean to do that. Uh, that's just my nature. But the point is, you let the scriptures explain themselves. You let the you let God speak for Himself through the scriptures, and let the Holy Spirit give you some understanding on it. And whichever topic I'm dealing with, or whatever message God has given me for that week, um, I want to try to break it down and always use scripture. Because you know, my wife is uh, she's always mentioning about how you put a lot of scripture in there, and that's good because a lot of people just ramble or they preach, and preaching has its place, but scriptures are the foundation of our faith, so it's always good to include them in context rightly divided. So with that, I always try to include a lot of scripture in my preaching when I when I give a topic that God gives me. And so overall, my focus has stayed with the simplicity of the overall message, making sure everyone hears it. That's why at the beginning of all my programs, I give some sort of introductory speech about how God, how good God is, what he's done for us. And I kind of repeat that every program at the beginning to give them some launch point of a foundation of this is what we're talking about and this is who God is. Now let's get to our message, that kind of thing. So basically, besides the simplicity of the gospel, and as you once said in one of your programs that I really liked, and that's practical Christianity. I mean, when you said that at one time, I thought that is really a great idea, practical Christianity, because after all, we have a daily walk and we have to incorporate practical things that God has called us to do within that walk. And so in an overall context, uh, the messages that he gives me just try to break them down where they're understandable and that they're a blessing to the people. Yeah, I practical application of scripture is where I think a lot of people are lacking. And so they do need to hear the scriptures and they do need to hear them broken down and they need to understand how to apply them to their life or whatever situation and circumstance that they're dealing with. If they're dealing with addiction or if they're, you know, whatever they're dealing with, if they know how to apply the scriptures, then they'll be able to get free because we know Jesus can set us free. Do you have any particular highlights in the past year of Expounder Ministries that you would tell the listeners about? Good things that have happened. Yes, I do. Matter of fact, because in the last year, um, I have joined, uh, and I'm joining two large radio stations in the U.S., two big city radio stations, one in San Francisco and one in Philadelphia, along with shortwave and, and the internet that I uh, host all my archive, all my programs on my website. Been getting a lot of good feedback. Like I said before, um, as far as I'm concerned, there's no call list. There's no email buggings. There's no uh, harassment for money. It's just, you know, how you doing? Did you enjoy the program? Let's talk about God, uh, a kind of a fellowship kind of thing. So that's the kind of emails that I enjoy. And um, so it has been an uptick in ministry because, like I said earlier, the radio ministry is kind of a lonely thing and people don't respond all the time. And either the national radio ministers are so big, they don't have time themselves to answer personally to people. So they have their staff do it. I have a small radio ministry. And so, I, you know, I'm pretty much the one that's reading and writing everything. So it's just what's happened in the past year has been a great uptick and it's been very encouraging. And uh, I've, been, I've been having, I've been getting assistance from other people, and I'm just, um, it's in a good place right now. So you're getting more feedback now from the bigger cities in the radio ministry. That's really good to hear. Where do you feel America is headed spiritually, and why? Well, this is a topic that I do address frequently on my radio program, but I will say I don't have very good news to talk about the condition of our country. I don't want to beat the listeners over the head with all the problems that we have, which are numerous and which are deep, deeply bad. I could name them all off, but I, I won't for time's sake. But I will say that uh, our country has almost divorced itself from God, from holiness, from righteousness, from obedience, from the true following of faith in Jesus Christ. And they have embraced um, the flesh. They have embraced witchcraft. They have embraced Egypt and Rome and Greece and all the problems of the prior generations. And and it's very grievous to, to see this as our country is... In in my view, now this is just my own personal opinion, we're really kind of being taken over and we're really kind of being swallowed up and the forces of evil are, are surrounding us. And there's not enough light coming from the true Christians because their voice, it's like a small remnant. Their voice is small and their voice is uh, kind of uh, out of the way. And the large churches and ministries are not facing and addressing and telling the people the realities of our country that is, in my opinion, again, is really going down the tube. So we 
we're in a bad place spiritually in America. Um, I know that there's going to be a falling away before the Lord comes back, and I think that's in progress. And I don't think national revival would even save us due to um, legalizing abortion, legalizing homosexual marriage, all these other things. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. But the blood that's been shed through abortion throughout the years, uh, God's not going to wink at that, and there's going to be a penalty to pay for it. And we are all waiting for that hammer to fall. It could happen soon. You know, our country could go under soon with the financial collapse or whatever. So my advice is to cling strong to God and pray and witness the best you can before the time runs out. Because look at Sodom and Gomorrah for a testimony. It was too much. God sent angels in there to bring the judgment. He warned the people and at least one, one, warned one person and then they could have warned others and they didn't hear. They, they fled and they were spared and boom, here comes the judgment. I'm afraid that same thing is going to happen with America. And yet we have the most light and the most, the word, the Bible, the TV, radio. We have the most Christianity in all the world. And yet, uh, apathy, like in Rome, has taken over, and they're completely given over to the flesh. And even in the church, you know, we see um, lukewarmness and the flesh. And so, uh, this is a time of, of fearing God. This is this is the moment of fearing God and to drawing close to Him before that hammer falls. That's my that's my current view of it. I agree with you. And you know, it reminds me. You're talking about how America has almost divorced itself from God. That's so well put. It reminds me of when. Moses was up on the mountain and the golden calf was brought out and all the Israelites just went into a wild naked party. You know, they just went crazy and partying and idolatry and all that. It makes me think of that. And it's it's just, it's so bad. Let me, let me break in here and say that that's an excellent point. And I did have those thoughts. But just think about that statement for a moment. God led them through Moses with all those miracles that they saw, those nine miracles of God, the strong arm that he brought them out, the provision of manna and quail, all that, and striking the rock and the water coming out, and the provision. And they so quickly, within 40 days, turned their hearts and said, make us a God to follow and make it an idol god of gold calf like the other nations after everything that we just saw God do. And so the leader is gone for 40 days up in the mountain communing with God. They so quickly, what was in their hearts? Was it the fear of God? Was it the awesomeness of God? Was it their love of God? No. It was, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? And how much flesh can I enjoy? And how much drunkenness and fornication can I enjoy? Is that not a picture of America? So quickly, their hearts turned after seeing at least in our nation, you know, we haven't seen the the great workings of God here lately that we saw in the early days. But those people, after 40 days, quickly turned aside and God wanted to just consume them in a moment and Moses interceded. And so our, our nation, similar to that, has done similar to that. And I'm just surprised that judgment hasn't come already. But thank you for bringing that up because that's a very important example from God's word to us. It has been before will be again. And the things that we see in the Exodus, I believe we will see repeated. And we're all sitting around in darkness, you know, a lot of people doing the wrong things and worshiping idol gods. And they just don't look the same as the golden calf. You know, somebody else's God may be their career, could be their could be their, their spouse, could be their grandchildren. I've seen people that worship their grandchildren. And it is it is what it is, but we need to repent. If you know you're in that kind of sin, we need to repent and turn back to God so at least you can be shown mercy. And I feel this coming up very strongly in my spirit right now because sin can only be answered two ways with repentance on our part or with judgment on his and we're moving into the time of the judgments and the lord has let me know he is going to fire what he what he calls the warning shot judgment which is going to be one large scale event that is going to scare the daylights out of anybody who has working brain cells and the people who don't repent then i would not want to be them for what comes after but the people who do repent he will have mercy on and it's very important that we remain very sensitive to him and that we get all the sin out of our lives that we can i don't think there's enough preaching on sin these days as there should be but what brother steve advice would you give for any new people just starting out in ministry in our current environment well there's a few things sanctify yourself before god because if you look at the pattern that god gave us in the old testament with the priests they had to sanctify themselves seven days before they had the privilege of ministering before the people so they themselves had to be right before god before they went out and ministered to the people and so 
sanctify yourself. And it's very hard in this society with whatever's out there to see and hear that you won't be defiled by what you see and hear. So that's just a part of today's world that a certain amount of defilement, you look on the social media, you look on the internet, you look on advertising, you look or you hear people's conversation at at the grocery store and you're going to hear cussing or you're going to hear naughtiness or you're going to see images on the internet or whatever. There's a certain amount of defilement that just comes with this world that we live in. However, with all that being said, keep yourself sanctified, asking forgiveness pretty much every day and keep yourself clean before God. Now, once that is working in a regular basis on you, then as I said before, get that solid foundation in the Word, have the direction that He wants you to go, and there's plenty of resources online uh, for your particular avenue of ministry or subject that that God wants you to um, specialize in. And so do some good research that you'll sound, you know, like you know what you're talking about. And then get a little strengthening in your backbone because you're going to have naysayers and you're going to have rejection. And rejection is something that we all have had to learn to deal with and just to accept. It took a long time for me to realize, you know, about the rejection thing. And then as I'm reminded, it's not about me. It's not a It's about God and his message. So, and like Jesus said, they're not rejecting me. They're rejecting God. And so uh, that's the thing. And so um, another thing that I want to briefly mention about about this topic, you know, in this area of rejection and in this area of people who immediately put up walls because, see, there's so many false religions in the world that they're, and the way they behave, that people have put up a wall, no matter if you talk anything about God, they just all lump it into one. But there is one that's true, and that's the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph, King David, Jesus, the whole thing. So, the New Testament especially. So, the point is, there is one that's true, there is one that's solid, there is one that will get you to heaven. But the secular person, the atheist or the hardened heart, they They will lump all into one. So you have to make sure when you're dealing with that is to differentiate. We're talking about the truth here. We're talking about the Son of God, Jesus. We're talking about the Holy Bible, what God has written, which is inspired of the Holy Spirit. You know, men might have penned it, but God authored it. So these words come from God. What I'm saying is coming from God because it's not coming from me because I'm just telling you what the Scriptures say. So don't worry about the rejection part because they're not really rejecting you. Um, And then there will be some that will hear you. So, and let me tell you, one soul saved is worth your whole lifelong worth of your living of your ministry. One soul. Because the people that are below our feet right now in hell that are languishing and suffering have no advocate. They have no one to speak for them because it's too late for them and they're suffering unimaginably and yet people on the earth if they knew what they were suffering down in hell they would never live the way they're living. So what is the, what's the problem? It's the darkness. It's the, it's the, uh, the blindness that the enemy has put upon the their hearts and their minds through secularism, through atheism, through unbelief, whatever the case is of their darkness. And then lastly, spiritual intercession to break down the barriers and the darkness that's over these people. Pray before you go, pray before you minister and do all this uh, intercessory work before and you'll find that your path is more smooth. Um, It's not going to be perfect, but it will certainly be much smoother. And true. And intercession is something we all need to be doing for the people that we care about, for our towns, for our neighborhoods. We need just to say, Lord, whatever you need to do, save them. You know, and as we get nearer and nearer to the end, we need to pray, Lord, whatever you need to do, get them in the ark, get them in the kingdom so they don't go to hell and suffer because there is no, there's no exit down there. There's no exit signs in hell, y'all. And it's a real place. There are people who have visited it and have come back with names and dates and addresses they could not have known any other way. Um, there was a book I read years ago. It's the best I've ever read on that. It's a very small book. It's out of print. It's hard to find, but it's called, um, I saw, um, I saw the devil in hell or something like that and the living died on it, something like that. And I can't remember who it's by, but it is so good. I don't think I have it on my website because it's nobody sells it anymore. And I used to have a copy of it, but I don't now. But it's very good. If you ever get a chance to read it, read it because there are stories in there. There's, there's just no way. There's just no way. But we need to pray for people. We need to intercede. You know, the judgment was held off from God destroying the entire camp of the Israelites because Moses interceded. And what better use of our time is there? Even five minutes a day when you're commuting, going somewhere, um, when you're doing chores in your house or in your yard, pray for somebody. 
Pray for somebody in your family. Pray for somebody in your neighborhood. Time that you spend in intercession is never wasted. My mother interceded for me for 10 plus years, and so did my elder sister, Judy, and they are both with the Lord now. God bless them. And she told me after I finally, (laughs) finally got saved because I was running from Jesus like a track star, y'all. Because I didn't think that the Christian life was anything I wanted because I didn't understand what he was actually offering me. It is so important what we tell people about Jesus when we witness. We can't present them with a list of rules. We need to present them with his love and his kindness and his mercy. He gets the fish into the boat and then he cleans them. But when I sold out, I sold out completely. He sent a young girl to me with a message for me that nobody could have known the stuff in the message but him because it was stuff that I had actually prayed even though I didn't believe in the God I prayed to. I would said, I said, if you're real, show me and I'll follow you. And he did not waste any time in doing just that. And so she brought me a prophetic message, basically kind of like a word of knowledge only more because it was a message from him. And my mouth just was hanging open and I sold out right there and never looked back. And it's the best decision I ever made, bar none. The best decision I ever made. It is the happiest, most peaceful life there is. There is no drug. There is no drink. There is no amount of sexual gratification or anything else on this earth that will give you the peace he is offering you. And there is nobody out there that you can partner with that will give you more blessing in your life than he can because he can do things no human can do, y'all. He can help you with things nobody can. If you can have a fatal illness and he can cure you. And I have seen him do that, by the way. He can heal you. He can heal things doctors can't heal. He can fix things that are broken. He can put families back together because he's God. He made the original design. He can do all of that. He is the answer. Brother Stephen, where can listeners hear your podcast and how can they get in touch with you? Well, if they wish, they can go to my website, which is www.expounderministries.com, which is E-X-P-O-U-N-D-E-R ministries.com. I also have another website address, www.sermondepot.com, and all that does is direct you to back to the uh, Expounder Ministries website. And then I house all my uh, preaching programs on those tabs, either Sermon Depot 1 or Sermon Depot 2, or the main page of the of Expounder Ministries, and I really don't have a lot of written uh, preaching on there. Mainly, it's just the audio, and I do have the statement of belief uh, on there, my pictures, and I do have a contact page if you want to contact me. And like I said, I'm not here to bug anybody. I'm not here to ask for any money. I'm just here to enjoy the things of God with you, maybe answer any questions from the Bible that I may know. If I don't know, I'll certainly tell you, but I'll try to find out. And the general things I pretty much know, but um, it's just there. I'm just here for the people to impart to them what God has shown me and uh, just to be a blessing. Speaking of blessings, it's been a very big blessing to come on Just Praise Him Radio because this is a privilege because uh, Glenda Lomax is a mighty woman of God. Her ministry is mighty and I'm grateful um, for her friendship and for this opportunity. On my website, I do have on Sermon Depot 1 and Sermon Depot 2, I have former interviews that I did with Glenda uh, back in in the early 2010s, uh, 2011, 2012, in that time frame. And those are very good interviews that she and I did back then. And so I highly recommend that you go to the website and hear those interviews because she's been a fireball all this time from that point to this. So you'll you'll get some good info from those interviews as well. And, and I want to thank you again, Glenda, for that because I still cherish those interviews from that time ago. That was years ago when I was just, just taken off in ministry. Yeah, it's quite a journey being in ministry, this kind of ministry especially. So thank you so much again for taking the time to do the interview. And I hope that you all enjoyed the podcast. I invite all of you to email Brother Stephen Milhorn. He would love to know what you thought about this interview. He doesn't get a lot of feedback from his listeners, but I know you guys listen and you respond. So his email is newtestamentbrother at gmail.com. Drop him a line and tell him what you think. Thanks for listening. Jesus bless you. Y'all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. I hope this has inspired you to a closer walk with Christ. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc., P.O. Box 854, Altus, Oklahoma. That's A-L-T-U-S, Oklahoma 73522 or by email at wingsofprophecy at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination.